of the feminine gender. My wife Becky and daughters Deborah, Daniela and Destiny will lead in the vocals. And so with faith and confidence now, women sing. fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are the works of god including you as a woman celebrate who you are and you know what all that god has said you will be you will become in the name of jesus hallelujah good evening to you my name is pastor joy and this is the platform of the restored woman for a long time my husband has not been here with us so many things in his hands but today he's here very good evening. Can you talk to us? Hallelujah. Mm. God bless you. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Mm. We give mm. God praise for his mm. mercy. Mm. We give God praise for his compassion. Mm. We just want to thank God because he makes all things beautiful in his time. We have been looking at the topic, hearing God's voice. And this is the second mm. episode in hearing God's voice. In hearing God's voice, something has been clearly understood about hearing God's voice. And one of them is this. God created man to hear his voice. God didn't create us and just allow us to just live a life of, you know, guess, you just guess and you just think, you just assume, you know, you just go anything and this thing look, looks good. You know, God created us and positioned our life in such a way that without hearing his voice, we can really go astray. Apart from the commandments he gave us, he told us in his word that we will hear a voice saying, this is the way. Walk, Walk in, it. in it. Hallelujah. Amen. We said some things last time. You're going to touch one or two of them. And then we continue into what we have today. What we talked about last time, we talked about Abraham. We talked about Isaac. And I just want to pick one of the scriptures there. Some important thing that was mentioned there. 
it was when i looked at that i saw how devastating it can be if a man don't hear god i want to read genesis chapter 12 the bible said there was a famine in the land famine in the land that abram went down to egypt to sojourn there for the famine was grievous it was a grievous situation he has landed in the land of promise and then he met a situation that is how by the time we meet situations we don't just react according to situation why is god allowing us to do this study so that you can see it and see exactly how god expects you to overcome through the guidance he gives to us the bible says there was famine in the land and abraham went down to egypt we didn't see where he he, he inquired of the lord we didn't see where he sought the lord the situation gave him a direction he there was a famine in the land and abraham went down to egypt to sojourn that the bible says for the famine was grievous imagine that grievous in the land and the bible says and it came to pass when he came near to enter into egypt that he said to sarah his wife behold now i know that you are a fair woman to look upon you know when you don't have direction in life and you begin to react according that is why we are different from the world that is why we are different from those who are not yet in the Lord, in Christ Jesus. There is this thing that God guides us and leads us. In the same situation where people are, you will see that God will direct you. You will see that God will give you specific instruction. At this junction, we didn't see Abraham inquiring of the Lord. He came into the land, he settled in the land, and suddenly... Famine hit the land, and we saw him reacting according to famine. We also saw another scripture. We saw how his son, years later, in the book of Genesis 26, again, from verse 1, we see that there was famine in the land again. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. So that one that came in the days of Abraham came. We saw how Abraham reacted to it. Now we are seeing another Famine in the Bible said, besides. So there are tides that will come and return again. It happened in the time of his father, and now it is coming to the time of his son. And I thank God for God's faithfulness here. We see that when the famine was there, the Bible said, Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of Philistines, unto Gerah. It was at that point in that journey that the Lord appeared to him. Verse 2 says, the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, go not down to Egypt. Probably it was a journey that was tending towards going down to Egypt. And when he got to that Gerah there, the Bible says the Lord appeared to him and told him, don't go down to Egypt. He said, go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I will tell you of. Now we see God's divine guidance. I have said clearly that you may not hear an audible voice, but in situations you find yourself, if you can just seek God, if you can just reason it together, the Bible says, come let us, reason together that is what goes in the book of isaiah chapter one because there are so many situations that will come before us we don't react according to situations we react according to god's instruction even when that instruction looked as if it is out of place in this place we saw there was famine there was dryness everywhere there was scarcity everywhere yet god doesn't want us to react according i am trusting god that every child of god hearing us today will be able to wait Wait on the Lord and wait to hear clearly. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Situation of lack, famine, scarcity, whatever troubles, whatever it is, God is always speaking. Praise the name of Jesus. Hearing God's voice is something you can't afford to continue living without. So today, we have some other scriptures, but before then, I want to bring in my husband that you're welcome good evening to you evening, evening. <laughs> praise god hallelujah you know, um, the issue of hearing god's voice and um, like you said in the former broadcast how sometimes people kind of um, imagine how did you hear god what mm. did god tell you what did, mm. how, how how what is his voice mm -hmm. like you know um in in in, in simple terms the the basic and most efficient way of hearing god's word is to go through the bible enough because the bible has a catalog a catalog of the of voices that's of instruction now owing to the fact that man is a spirit and then um, the bible says 
um, the words that I speak to their spirit and their life. John mm. six sixty three. So mm. now the knowledge of God's word in your spirit, unconsciously when you have situations that require divine instruction. Now, it begins to speak because the word of God is a catalog of instruction of the voices of God pertaining to several um, mm. situations, instances. You know, you hear like when it comes to determining divine direction, when it comes to following God in faith, Come when it comes to how to live with your spouse. If you have the bedrock of the word of God keeping your feet, your feet will not be taken. Now, mm. the truth is, there are times you may not exactly know what to do. But the word of God that is inside you begins to send a very significant direction that you may not be able to put your hand on it, but you sense that this is what you need to do. Yes. Now, the, 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 the raw, that's the, the, the readable, the, 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 the commandments that you also know becomes a voice on its own. Like for instance, somebody who is growing up knows that uh, uh, deep inside of you, you may say, you, some people say they don't have knowledge of this or that. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know it's a sin. But do you know that if you, you listen to the knowledge of the spirit of God, that, that's the spirit that's inside the person, bearing witness that this is wrong, this is wrong. Often people kill that knowledge. But when you have taken time to study the word of God, it quickens your conscience. And you don't want your conscience to be defiled. And the voice of your conscience with the power of the word of God begins to confirm instruction to bring you to the place of destiny, to the place of destination where you don't encounter destruction. Because the ignorance of instruction and the disrespect for instruction will always bring people to destruction. So the word of God becomes a bedrock. And you see, that is why Abraham didn't have the word of God as we have it today. You know, Isaac didn't have it. But here we have read the testimonies of these people, how they went with God, how they dealt with God, how they inquired from God. How, and then you see that this thing has left, if you are consistent with the word of God, it leaves the realm of actions and goes into the thought realm where you can think about the word of God. That's what meditation is. You meditate on the word of God and then observe to do all that is written therein. You are not holding it then, but you are observing it, telling, talking to yourself and saying, no, if this is what God's word says, mm. then I cannot do this. I cannot do I that. Can. I pray that you will have the word of God embedded in your heart. Mm. You will have a fresh hunger. Close. Woman out there, you, 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 you know, you're doing your work, you're doing what you need to. You could just download the word and just put it in your ear. Mm. You know, just listen to it. You take time out to read. Listen, 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 listen. By the time you have listened enough, you, you will see that it will suffocate every contrary voice. It will suffocate the voice of lust. Mm. It will suffocate the voice of disobedience. It will suffocate the voice of error. It will just, there will be something telling you deep inside that this is not the right path mm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the word is the basic foundation for hearing God, mm, yes. his voice, the word. He, God wouldn't speak anything outside his word. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise I God. I remember, too. you know, studying the word of God. That is mm. where actually I personally discovered mm. that my sensitivity to hearing God greatly improved. Yeah. Reading the word and reading yeah. the word and reading the word. And the Lord began to speak to me, first of all, through the scriptures. Mm. Yes. The Bible said in the book of John chapter 10, verse 27, he said, my sheep hear my hear voice. My voice. Yeah. yeah. He said, and I know them. Mm. Wow. And they follow me. Mm. Amazing. It, 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 it's an established pattern. Yes. Mm. They hear his voice. Mm. He knows them and they follow him. Wow. Hearing his voice, recognition, and the truth is that this thing we are studying as we look at the life of our patriarch, uh, 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 father Abraham, we saw some things there that is actually calling us to avoid. Because it doesn't matter who you are. Any place and any point in your life that you did not hear God, wow. that can be a tune. I want to read something here. Look at what he said. He said, that is Pharaoh talking to Abraham here. Wow. Why sayest thou she is my sister? That's a rebuke. Hmm. Yes. 
Very sharp one. Because he didn't hear God. Who knows what Isaac could have done if he went down to Egypt? Hmm. He said, so I might have taken her to me to wife. Now, therefore, behold your wife, take her, and go thy way. Wow. Now, look at verse 20. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. You know, this command, I look at it, he said, Pharaoh commanded his man concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. I believe in this place, it is more like banning him from coming to... They deported him. It, that is actually what it was. He was deported, you know. And then... Um, um, put, and the put immigration... A red flag, put a red flag on his passport. Man, this man shouldn't God. come near here again. He shouldn't be He's given any entrance Ent into this country. Rejected. You know, God worked out some things great in his life. Yeah. He became great. Yeah. Eventually, his descendants, they went down to that Egypt. But God can recover you in any place Agabada, that you have Agabada, gone Agabada, astray. Agabada, that is the Agabada. essence. Yeah. In case you have not heard God at any point and you have done, you know, compromise. Mm. People look at this and they say, after all, Abraham lied. I can tell lies. You mm. are walking on dangerous Very ground. Dangerous look at the effect. There was a rebuke here. And that goes for anyone who is not waiting to hear on God. In in case you have hit a point in your life where there was fair mind, please wait on the Lord. Mm. You may not hear clearly what God said, but you will hear this impression. Do this. Do that. And as you follow it, you will discover it was God's direction. And some people are really gifted to hear God clearly, you know, in the dream, in direction. I said the last time about a, a friend of mine. She, she, she told me how she was, she, she just said that her spiritual life really needs to be, you know, upgraded, something like that. And she was just waiting on the Lord, fasting and praying, not yeah. for any space, but she was just fasting and praying and asking God to, you know, to improve her spiritual life. She has seen there are some lack of you know, discipline here and there, and while she was waiting, after some time, she discovered something. She discovered that her prayer life increased, her mm. hunger for the word of God increased, yeah. and something began to return. She's somebody that is gifted in dreams. When she see anything in the dream, it happens like that. But she discovered for a very long time, actually for years, she would dream, and when she woke up, she would not remember again. Mm. And it happened for a long time. And she, a time came, she, 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 she didn't take notice of that. But she told me as soon as she embarked on this personal fast and prayer that she just gave herself, she discovered something happened. Mm. She suddenly began to have her dreams again. Specific instructions that God would give her through dreams. And she remembered them. Wow. Why? She returned back to the word of God to prayer, mm. to fasting. Mm. I said the last time I read, as I read in Isaiah that some ears can be hearing yet they can't understand. He told Isaiah, talk to them. They will keep hearing, but they will not understand. Their ears have been dull, made dull, mm. and their eyes can't even see until destruction comes. And if you don't see, certainly destruction will really come. I want to trust God today. That somebody who has taken a decision without asking God, and now you see some complications. We saw what happened in the life of Abraham. By the time he was coming out of Egypt, he didn't come back alone. So many baggages, extra baggages were added that eventually manifested. That was Hegai. I wish Hegai never surfaced. I don't think Hegai was part of the plan, but somehow God has a way of walking through our, our, our mistakes. And I don't know how, how, how long you have drifted or how far you have involved yourself in things that are outside of God. So why? Because you didn't hear the voice of God. God is still in the business of working out his great purposes, his divine plans for your life. Mm. Through all those things, you are going to say, Lord, like Abraham, I can see very clearly, he didn't do the right thing. Yes, he did. It is not only, it's not the first time. Another time it happened again with the wife again. He said it was his sister again. Another king, I wonder what it was happening here. This woman was way a 90 years old woman. I believe there was some touch that God did in the life of Sarah. She became beautiful again, maybe like a sweet sixteen lady, you know. The Bible says the king saw her and took her. And of mm. course, Abraham couldn't do anything. He already said it's a sister. We saw a repetition of something that happened again to the extent that God needed to intervene again. The Bible says that when, 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 the, when the king, the king of the Philistines at that time, God has come to the dream again. Can't you see, God speaks sometimes in the dream. The Bible says God, God spoke to, who is again? The Joseph. king. 
Yeah, the king. Yeah. The king of Egypt. Mm. He spoke to him in the dream. That was Pharaoh. He was, we also saw him speaking again in the dream, warning the king of the Philistines. That woman is a prophet's wife, and you will be dead. Just return yeah, that you're woman. Dead, you're yeah. a dead man. Why? You know, there are things we have done. Don't ever look at it and say, ah, I can lie. Tell you the truth is this. When you hear God, he leads you. You don't need to manipulate those situations for you to just look away, you know, and find a way to go through it. Wait on the Lord. Mm. He will give you direction. Mm. And from henceforth, I, be, I want to let you know that God is really ready. Hallelujah. He is really willing Hallelujah. to give you direction. Amen. I remember my husband coming to propose to me. <laughs> Daddy, you remember now? And um, actually, I didn't know him. <laughs> Daddy, can you tell that story about hearing God and how you knew that <laughs> you should come and propose? <laughs> mm, mm, can you tell us about that? No, it's a long story. We can't. Oh, we can't say all that. You can't say all yeah. that. Yes, it's a long story. Yes, a very long story. But the thing, the fact is that you know, you 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 always <laughs> would hear God if you are if you are willing to listen. That's the truth. Yes. If you are willing to listen. You know, I sometimes I, I wonder how, I'll be sincere with you, I wonder how the same Abraham who, who heard God tell mm. him about how he was going to bless him, mm. who couldn't hear God about why he didn't need to lie oh. and tell, he tell this person is my wife or is not my wife hey. or all that. And then how he, he, he didn't hear to refuse the Egyptian gift. Hey. You know, it, it, it's one thing to, to, ah, yeah, to yeah, be yeah, gifted yeah, yeah, with something. It's another thing to know that yeah. these gifts will not bring a lift but a death. Hi. You know, he, he didn't understand it because... And then another thing is why he didn't tell his wife this will not come out to any good. Sleeping with Hagar will not produce any good. Hey. Because I think that God would not have just kept quiet hey. for Hagar yeah, to yeah, produce... Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Ishmael. Ishmael and then put everybody in, in, in a mess. You know? So so all this all this this thing just shows you the the, the handicapping effect hearing of not God. hearing God. So but back to our story, I, I, I just I just was I, in fact at that point that's why you know hearing God has a lot to do with waiting time. Oh. you know you, you I, I like God so much that you, you may just be waiting on God for something and he, he just comes from another dimension oh. with good things. Hallelujah. Because your something you're looking for may not actually be what God intends. Because he's all knowing. Yes. So, but that position of waiting to hear mm. always makes you um, ready to have. You know, the, the position of waiting to hear makes you ready to have. Even the things you didn't know you need. I, I remember then I was just fasting for 40 days, you know, in September and then just waiting on god i wasn't i wasn't looking for a wife i wasn't at that point I, I was not you know praise god i wasn't looking for a wife i wasn't I, I was just enjoying the fact that i was waiting on god and then here was this issue of uh, this is your wife i said no i'm i'm not looking for a wife anymore <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not looking for a wife but the thing is the bottom line is what we have today where we, we are married and then it's 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 just that god speaks to us when we are waiting to hear mm. that's just it when we are waiting to hear so you position yourself that's why we've talked about the word of god pastor Joy had talked about why it's important to be in a waiting season i'm just re-echoing that you have to wait to hear god mm. and then once you are there at that point you will always hear praise the lord Hallelujah. so 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 yeah. that's it i can't tell Beautiful. all that story here but pastor Joy, <laughs> i can remember very clearly <laughs> um i was waiting on the lord actually the same time he was waiting on the lord and i was waiting specifically not for marriage <laughs> at the time the lord has given me instruction about it at the junction of my life and i was waiting on the lord to give me instruction and here is this man coming you know this young man just approached me he said the lord said you're my wife it was so unromantic <laughs> you know you're waiting to see you know you fall in love and all another but the truth is this when God has positioned things for you. I believe if I was not, if I, at that time, if I was not waiting on the Lord, probably I might have missed it. You were waiting on the Lord for something because you came at the junction of your life and God is speaking about something else. Even my husband said that time, said, Lord, I proposed to so many girls and Father, this time I just want to focus and do your work. 
and that was where that instruction came and i want to really let you know that it doesn't matter if you have been missing it, you did the guesswork and it, it, it turned out wrong because some people say, ah, uh, I, I, I thought I heard God because I saw the girl in the dream. Maybe because you, 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 your mind is just filled. Allow the Lord to give you his direction. It can never fail. fail yeah. It can never, it can never fail. fail. It can never fail. You can really clear your spiritual ears. I mentioned the last time something very pathetic happened in our generation where people are living by prophecies. Mm. Now, that is very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Prophesy to me. They are giving instruction. I had one. I, I was watching. I, I, it was so, you know, so, so the, the, the man of God was prophesying. He said, I saw this. I saw the man said, what he saw is true. The description of his business, he said, from henceforth, you cannot take any decision without me leading you on what to do. Wow. A lot of people are out there. That and they are with the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ. Now that is wrong. That is erroneous. God does not lead us that way. The Lord has given us the Holy Spirit to lead us. And that is why it is costing you so much if you are not developing your relationship with the with, Lord. How? With God, yes. If you are not developing your relationship with God, how can you hear him clearly? You can't live on somebody else's my ear. My God, that somebody said... It's somebody's ears. You can't live on oh somebody's ears. Oh my God. Oh my God. We see a generation that is driven through prophecy. I heard someone saying that the prophecy that came to them is that they should give his vehicle. He has a very, you know, this um, uh, uh, sophisticated machine <laughs> vehicle. And then that the prophecy of the pastor was that he should bring that vehicle for the pastor to drive it for some time so they can drive out evil spirit from that vehicle. Accidents. My what have you God. All funny, funny operations. My God. God. Charlatanized Hearing operations. God's voice can make you look at that man and say, now I is a confirmation that you are not a man of God. God does not lead that way. We are having a generation that is that is running helter scatter because you do not hear God. God said again as I quote, he said, my sheep hear my voice, hear my voice mm. and they follow me. He said in that place, and the voice of stranger, a stranger they will not follow. Mm. They will not follow. That is John chapter 10. I read 27. My sheep hear my, my voice. voice. And I know them. And they follow me. They follow me. You don't follow every other thing you hear. I'm trusting God that you'll come to the place of repentance. You know what? We have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But if you don't ask him, Lord, I am sorry for running here and there without sitting to develop my ears to hear. Today, I ask you to lead me. He said he will guide you into all, all truths. truths. The truth you are expecting to hear. God is ready to guide you into them. All you need to do is to come back. And I thank God for God's mercy, how he intervened in the life of Abraham. Yes, he intervened in the life of Abraham. We saw God's testimony when he told Isaac, dwell in this land, I will bless you. God made sure mm. something specific. I will bless you. I will bless your descendants. I want to read it as we conclude because God saw the effects. Not hearing God can affect your family, your descendants. I want to read it in Genesis chapter 26. He said, verse 2, And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I, I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you, and I will bless thee. For unto thee will I... Unto mm. thee and unto thy seed will I give all these countries, and Hallelujah. I will perform the oath which I swore unto thy father. Hallelujah. Hearing God will make God to perform the oath mm. that he really replied. He said, I swore unto Abraham thy father, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries. Wow. And in thy seed, he was mentioning seed, seed, that's your fruitfulness. All this nation yes. shall be blessed. Shall be blessed. Mm. Your fruitfulness will flourish when you hear God. Mm. He said your seed and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. See? And that is God pulling. You see God's involvement in trying to pull us out anytime we are trying. To, and that is what God is doing for somebody. He really wants you to concentrate and hear his voice. And as we hear his voice, you will enjoy fruitfulness. You will not walk into dryness. You will not walk into the place that you are like confused again and trying to find a way of wriggling yourself out of where you have committed yourself. And in case you have brought yourself into any kind of commitment that is not of God, you are going to ask God for mercy. He can do amazing things like appearing to people and telling them, cancel that contract. 
and will leave my son out of this. That was what God did. He appeared to, to Pharaoh. He appeared and warned him. Return that woman. In fact, the other one in the, in, in the Philistine land, the Bible says that he has given all of them barrenness. And he says, if you don't return, that is God's involvement. God can intervene and God can detangle every entanglement mm. you may have involved yourself mm. in. He really wants to lead you. He really wants to guide you. He really wants to speak to you. He may not speak clearly. I know that most of the time I hear God, it comes as an impression. I just have a knowing that this is what I should do. I just have a knowing. And when I move, I see God confirming it. It's so sweet to hear the voice of God. Mm. You can go ahead and talk and ask God, please forgive me for whatever mm. I've involved myself that is not your will. Lord, please. You have to say a word, Daddy, before we... Oh, no, you, 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 we've, we've, we've taken a lot of time to yes. explain this. It's mm. important to hear. I just want to say divine intervention Amen. for wherever you may have strayed. Mm. God always oh, wants Jesus. to bring divine intervention. He always does. He always, does. Yes. He always brings. Yes. So we pray divine intervention. Yes. Maybe you are in a marriage oh. and you look like you, you ignore the oh. conscious voice oh. of God. Oh. We pray divine intervention. In you have entered the business. Jesus. You ignored the warning mm. of God. You saw the mm. red alert. You have even, some people have even even invested money and it turns out your money has is going down the drain oh, i pray divine intervention in today i call i call for a recovery and in a restoration by jesus. mercy Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. yes i call for restoration in recovery jesus. in the name of jesus Amen. Thank you, Father. So, thank Pastor George, time, time has really For gone. That Father, we thank you. For yes. that mm. we thank you. In we give Badesh. you praise. Amen. In Jesus' name, as God has intervened, I tell you something, wait on him like that, my friend, mm. who just spent time in praying mm. and seeking God, and mm. suddenly things began to open her sensitivity. Yes. Open. Yes. I pray, God, as you wait on him in this season, sensitivity will return back. Mm. You will just suddenly know what you need to do mm. and how you need to move. In the name of Jesus, the Amen. Lord bless you, the Lord Amen. keep you. I want Amen. to be somebody to Christ who is not yet at peace with God. I'm going to say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, have mercy on have me. Mercy on Forgive me. me my sins. Forgive me my sins. Wash me. Wash in me. In the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus. I ask, I ask that to be my Lord. That to be my Lord. Be my Savior. And be my Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. The Lord bless you and keep you till we come your way again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I was Amen. Cool. Oh, I was made.